Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Geraldine Hunt, Marketing Manager here at Titan HQ, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar on keeping your remote workers twice as secure with Spam Titan and Web Titan. Today, we're discussing the ongoing COVID-19 exploitation by cyber criminals and how we can meet the challenge of protecting a fully distributed workforce by employing powerful layered security. The webinar will kick off in just a moment. Uh, first, let me say thanks for joining us today. Uh, we will be hosting a Q&A session at the end. So any questions, just submit them via the question panel and we'll answer as many uh, as possible today. If we don't get to your question, uh, we'll be back to you with a reply via email within 24 hours. So let me uh, introduce today's panel. We are delighted to welcome our special guest, Kevin Hall, Senior Systems Engineer with Datapack. Uh, Datapack are one of Ireland's leading ICT providers and a longtime partner of Titan HQ. We are also joined by Eddie Monaghan, a Channel Manager with Titan HQ. Uh, also, Derek Higgins, our Engineering Manager and a regular contributor to our webinars. And also by Mark Ludden, Strategic Alliance Manager here at Titan HQ. Thanks to our panelists uh, for contributing today. I'm very excited about today's session. We have a wealth of experience on our panel. Uh, we have well over 40 years of dedicated IT security experience between everybody. So it should make for some interesting discussion points. Uh, with that, Mark, uh, can I come to you first? On our call today, we have some existing customers, but also some attendees that are totally new to Titan HQ. Could you uh, introduce who we are and what we do to our audience, please? Thanks, Joe. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm going to briefly talk about who we are, what we do, and some of the major brands we are protecting. Uh, so for anyone on the webinar that doesn't know who we are, Titan HQ are a leading cloud vendor specializing in email and web security solutions. As you can guess from the accent, uh, we are an Irish company. We're actually headquartered in the west of Ireland in Galway, uh, but we also have offices in the US, so one in Tampa and another in uh, New York. Uh, we are privately held and profitable. Our sole focus is on email and web security solutions, primarily with cloud-based deployments. And all three of our products have REST APIs. So if you want to integrate our products within uh, your customer portals via the API or use our APIs for migration purposes, that can easily be done. We've roughly 10,000 customers globally across 150 countries. Uh, and that's a mixed bag from small SMBs, to MSPs catering to the SMB marketplace, enterprises, all the way up to tier one mobile operators. Just on the MSP space, we have about three and a half thousand MSPs globally that are using our products to secure their downstream customers. So some stats on our customer base or on our products. Uh, we have around 35 million malware sites a month that are being blocked by Web Titan. Our, on our email filtering solution, we're filtering 3 billion emails monthly and back to web titan we're tracking to filter 2.5 billion dns requests each and every single day on the right hand side you're going to see some of our selected customers um, most of these major brands are using web titan for different scenarios and use cases but the most important aspect for them was protecting their users from malicious threats and using web titan as an extra layer of security I think long before COVID-19, uh, there had been a significant shift in the amount of people working from home, be that one or two days a week, uh, full time, or people taking their work home with them. With Office 365 and other collaboration tools, people can work from anywhere in the world, uh, which, is, which can cause major security issues for companies. Unfortunately, there are people who capitalize on these global tragedies, resulting in a rise of scams and phishing attacks the coronavirus pandemic has forced many enterprise companies to move to, uh, well, I suppose, move their internal staff to work from home, which is, opens their business to much more higher security risks like malware, ransomware, phishing, spear phishing, CO impersonation threats, and much, much more. With that being said, uh, let me introduce our solutions that will allow you to secure your remote workforce with a particular spotlight on our web filtering solution, WebTitan. So we have three products. Um, 
Firstly, let me introduce Spam Titan. So Spam Titan is our email web, uh, email filtering product. This typically sits in front of Office 365, G Suite, or your on-site mail servers. At this point, we will filter all the traffic uh, for viruses, band attachments, uh, spam, and then advanced threats like ransomware, phishing attacks, uh, CO impersonation. Once we clean that mail, we will then send on to the Office 365 uh, mail server or a G Suite tenant. We also then have Archetype, which is our cloud-based archiving product. Uh, this can be used to archive all inbound, outbound, and internal traffic for however long you want uh, for legal, legal compliancy and also for e-discovery purposes. And then we have WebTitan, and WebTitan Cloud is our DNS-based solution providing advanced web filtering protection from both HTTP and HTTPS security threats. This is the product we really want to show you today. And the great thing about WebTitan Cloud is that it comes or can be used for many different deployment options. And let's just discuss those deployment options. So with WebTitan Cloud, there are four, de four deployment options that you can use. So firstly, we have the option to use it as a security layer. Very simply, this can be set up in a matter of minutes. It's a case of adding your unique identifier, which is typically your external IP address, providing or setting up the policy that you want to push out to your uh, location, and then switching over your DNS forwarders. Second deployment then is Active Directory integration. So we have the ability to uh, integrate based off users or AD groups and assign different policies to those groups. And the thirdly then is we have the ability to filter remote users on and off the network. We have an agent that can be deployed and pushed out to your workforce in a matter of minutes. Uh, this can be pushed out via any RMM or MDM solution. Our agent will protect your users 24-7 from anywhere in the world. Uh, it's also smart enough to know when it comes on-site, or you can have different policies when it comes on-site versus off-site. Um, and what we're finding, especially during these times, securing your remote workforce is paramount to making sure your, remote, uh, your network remains secure. The final deployment is actually, uh, an, you can use all three deployments together. So for an example, here at Titan HQ, um, our guest Wi-Fi is actually used as a security layer, protecting users when they come on to, uh, into our office uh, from malicious threats. When our domain users log in, we're actually using our Active Directory sync so that we can have different user policies based on our user and groups within Active Directory. And then when our remote workforce are working from home, especially during these times, we have the agent deployed so that we can protect them on and off the network. I'm now going to pass you to Derek Higgins, our sales engineering manager, who will bring you through a live installation of the on-the-go agent to show you how you can protect your remote workforce in a matter of minutes. Thanks for that, Mark. Um, so yes, as Mark mentioned, I'm going to go through an installation of our roaming agent called On The Go, or OTG for short. On the graphic in front of us, this gives a, a quick overview of how OTG works. It can be installed on any Windows laptop or Mac, and it will hard code the DNS to come to our servers. When a request comes from the user, we will check that DNS request. If it is allowed, they'll be presented to the page as normal. If it is blocked, they will receive a block page from Web Titan Cloud. This block page is fully customizable. You can add logos and color schemes and change it to how you would like it to look and feel. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go through a live installation of OTG. So when you sign up to Web Titan Cloud for your trial, you'll be given a login details, so your URL, your username and password. You'll also be given the DNS IPs for our Web Titan Cloud servers. Again, this is hosted on AWS, um, fully scalable and multi-tenanted. This is an account level login. There's no data going through it yet. I'm logged in for the first time. So what I'm going to do is I want to install OTG. You'll also be given our documents um, and you'll we'll also hold your hand in going through the installation of any of our products. So this is our documents portal. Today I want to look at Web Titan and I'm interested in OTG for Windows because I'm going to install this on a Windows laptop. So I click here 
and you'll get some information on OTG. Now I'm going to download OTG and install it. This goes through the steps to install and also gives you some added parameters you can add. So simply I click here to download the MSI. I have it pre-stored here in an OTG folder. So OTG can be, or OTG is installed by the command line, uh, ran as administrator. This can be pushed out en masse using RMM tools or scripting. Today I'm going to install it on an individual um, laptop. So I have my command line opened up here. So what I need to do is I need to change directory into the directory where the MSI file is held. So if I come in here and I change directory, and if I show what's in this directory, we can see setup.msi is stored here. On our documents link, you're given an example install script. Again, this is an example only. So if I copy this and paste it into Notepad, we can see it here. So mainly I need to change the URL to the URL I used to log into Web Titan Cloud, which in this case was WTC2. The DNS resolver will also be given to you on sign up, and then my username and password so it knows what account to install it to. One thing to note here, the email address and password is only used for the initial conversation on install. It is not stored anywhere, and this can be fully changed after the installation of OTG is complete. OTGs will continue. Um, this can change no problem after installation. So simply to install OTG, I copy this line of code and I paste it into the command line. Hit return and that will run and install OTG. Again, this is an excellent layer of security because when the laptop is out of the office, it will send all traffic to us for filtering. One thing that is key here as well is VPN traffic. VPN traffic is for in your internal resources. A lot of people may have split tunneling DNS going on as well. So OTG will only filter the non-VPN traffic. So any traffic coming out of the non-VPN adapters will be filtered by OTG. Anything going through the VPN adapters will not be filtered by OTG because it's your internal resources. So now that that's installed, we should see a icon here. And as you can see, external IP and the status is connected. You can also install OTG in silent mode. So this icon does not appear, but for the purpose of the demonstration, I want it to appear here. So if I come back out here to WTC2 and come to settings, locations and roaming, we can now see this is my laptop name. This is my current public IP address and this is the key sharing occurring. So what I'm going to do now is I do not have a VPN connected, so my traffic should be filtered. In the policy that I have in place, I have blocked the security focus categories, but I will also block alcohol. So if I click save here, I'm going to block alcohol, and I'm going to try and um, access an alcohol related site. So now that this is the policy that is in place, I'm going to now attempt to go to an alcohol related site. So if we come here and go to Budweiser.com, as you can see, it is blocked immediately. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable a VPN. So if I come here and I'm just going to connect to a VPN, that'll take a moment to take effect. But once the VPN is in place, the VPN traffic will not be filtered. So if I come back out here to reporting, perfect, my VPN is now connected. And on reporting, we can see the Budweiser was blocked and Corona was blocked also. And there's other DNS traffic because there's a lot of things running in the background of the machine uh, that would be sending DNS requests as well. So if I come back out to Budweiser and I refresh this page, we can now see that all my traffic is going through uh, the VPN. So the Budweiser page does in fact load now.
So as you can see, it has now loaded. In reporting, that request will not be seen here because it was not sent to Web Titan Cloud as it's going out via the VPN. So again, OTG is very effective for your roaming users, so they can be filtered no matter where in the world they connect to the internet. And I will pass it back to Geraldine now. Thanks, Derek. Uh, very interesting. A lot to consider there. Um, we've got a related question in. Um, it's from Carl in New Jersey. I run two offices and 100 remote workers. Can I set up different policies for different locations? Yeah, good question. Um, and something we get asked quite frequently. Uh, the answer is yes, you can. And we have multiple ways of doing that. If you wanted a single policy per location, um, we can assign a policy per public IP address. So the egress point for each office, we can assign a policy. We could also do AD integration for, for the sites as well. So you can assign group policies to your users when they're in the office. And of course, you can have OTG for your roaming users as well. So the, the answer is yes, and we have multiple ways of doing that. Great, Derek, thank you. Um, Eddie, if I can come to you next. Something that comes up frequently when we speak to customers is the issue of human error. It's scary to think how simple web surfing can see users redirected to very dangerous and malicious websites. Um, a simple click or a visit to a website can result in an email breach, malware download, or even a ransomware attack. How important is the layered security or defense in depth approach in these situations? And also, how important is it to secure both email and web? Great question, Jer, and I'm sure one that will resonate with a lot of people on the call today. I know many of you are already using a layered approach when it comes to security. And, and what do we mean by a layered approach? We essentially mean more than one set of eyes looking at a problem. Uh, from a security perspective, how does that resonate? Well, first of all, I suppose the the key or the 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 border the the key platform in in a layered security approach would be email security. Email is still one of the largest vectors of threats coming onto a network, and it's really really important that you have a solid email security platform in place. And that's where Spam Titan sits in. And in fact, Spam Titan itself has multiple layers within the product. For example, we have two antiviruses along with sandboxing, along with many, many other security layers to ensure that the emails that get to your end user's inbox are free of threats. The next layer we would look at is firewalls. So what's a firewall? A firewall is the barrier between the trusted and the untrusted network. Now, I know many of you have firewall vendors that you work with, and there's some fantastic uh, products out there in that space. One thing I would say is we are seeing some firewall vendors, including email security in their platform, and we caution against uh, using uh, both email and firewall in one, in one platform. Again, you're moving away from having that second set of eyes. You're moving away from that uh, defense in depth approach. Then we have antivirus, and, and I know again, many of you have your own antivirus vendors that you work with. There's some fantastic products out there in the market today. Uh, we're gonna talk about DNS filtering in a second, but one thing I would mention when it comes to antivirus is that we are seeing some AV providers incorporating DNS filtering in their solution. And you know, again, we caution against this. Uh, these are two separate protocols and you know, you're moving away from that, having that second set of eyes if you're incorporating both in one product. So again, I would keep DNS filtering separate from AV. And then of course, DNS filtering, Web Titan Cloud, the product that we've been, uh, we've been looking at so far. And yeah, you know, we're seeing more and more of our customers, more and more of our partners adapt Web Titan Cloud. And I suppose this is for, for a variety of reasons. Um, First and foremost, the depth of the threat intelligence that sits beneath Web Titan Cloud is fantastic. Uh, we're looking at somewhere in the region of 700 million URLs, 6 billion web pages on any given day. And we're consistently calling the web, looking for new threats as they emerge. And just to put some perspective on, on, on the size of this problem, on, on a good day, we see somewhere in the region of 30,000 new sites come on stream. In a bad day, that can be as high as 100,000. So this is a real, real problem and a problem that DNS filtering can go towards solving. 
the next reason that uh, people tend to use the product as well is the ease with which it can be deployed. And I know Derek has has run through how we roll out the agent, how you set this up on the network. So again, very, very easy to deploy. And the third reason, the where this sits, where this sits on your network. So if you think in terms of DNS security, like the security guard at the gate, and why I say that, well, we're making the decision whether you should deliver the page or not at the DNS level before that page is delivered. So rather than having you clean up something when it hits your network, we're stopping that threat before it gets there. And I suppose the final thing to mention as well as to why people are moving towards DNS security as an essential security layer sits around the new reality that we are now in, in the wake of COVID-19. I'm sure we're all going to be going back to our offices pretty soon, but there is a train of thought out there that remote working and home working is going to be here in one way, shape or form to stay for quite a while. So when you're looking at a layered security approach, you've got to consider solutions that can protect your users, not just when they're on the network in the office, but also when they're off the network working from home. And I think, you know, Web Titan Cloud certainly ticks that box uh, when you're deploying on the go agents uh, on all of your users endpoints. Thanks, Eddie. Um, a lot of food for thought there. Uh, can I bring you in on this, Kevin? And, and thanks again for joining us today. As a very busy MSP uh, supporting a range of SMB customers, is that what you're seeing in the field? Are most of your customers using a layered approach to security? I suppose, Geraldine, we have a we have a mix of customers when it comes to layered security. We have some customers who have um, been practicing uh, this type of practice uh, for, for a longer period of time. Um, but what we're seeing now is customers are coming to us with users that are working remotely and they're looking to, you know, to secure both in the office and outside the office. Um, so what we're seeing is now they're, they're coming to us looking for these solutions. Um, one of the big things I see uh, as an issue for home users is uh, web protection. Um, a lot of our customers would have uh, had products that were mainly based for protecting the customer when they were working in the office environment and when they work, when they work from home, there was no protection available. So we're seeing a lot of people interested in uh, a product that can protect uh, the end user once once they work from home from uh, internet based attacks. Thanks, Kevin. Um, it's always interesting to get the real world view on this, especially in the current environment. And it's clear that phishing attacks, fake websites, Beck attacks, none of this is going away. Um, Derek, if I could come to you, uh, what type of threats are we seeing at the moment, particularly COVID related threats? Are we seeing anything different? Yeah, so we're seeing a number of threats coming in. Um, they follow the same format as previously, but they're more um, personable uh, to people as well. So they're very focused like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show two types of um, email threats that we're seeing coming through. So on this slide, um, we can see this is a display name spoofing type attack. So what's happening here is the display name is changed or is representing someone you may know but the actual email address behind that um, is not that person's email address. This would also be called, say, a spear phishing type attack, um, where it's someone impersonating somebody you know, giving you some information with the link in there. Obviously, everybody at the moment worldwide is um, hungry for stats, for graphs, for information about COVID. So this is playing on that as well. So. This link would most likely be a click and control type attack. So if you clicked on this, it would download the, the virus or it would call home to activate the virus. So if you do get this, don't always rely on the display name. The email address behind that could be completely, completely different. So always err on the side of caution and don't click links without in emails if you weren't expecting an email from that person or if you have any doubt whatsoever, um, always think twice about it. The second example is from a, it's a company-wide type email. So this is saying an emergency response unit. This is an email that's being sent out to all, all members of staff in relation to a member of staff who has contracted COVID. Obviously, this would engage someone very quickly, 
But again, please err on the side of caution. Companies would not be sending out um, emails with attachments, with links and so on and so on in it. Um, most likely you'd have prior notice if there was something like that being sent out. If you're ever in doubt about any email, especially like this, um, ask a colleague. Even though I know most people are working remote now, we've all got Teams, we've all got uh, Skype for Business and so on. So just, just ask somebody else, did you receive this email? Or ask a member of IT. Never click a link, never click and uh, download an attachment in an email if you're not expecting it. Always err on the side of caution. In relation to spam titan and web titan and how they can help protect you from these types of attacks, this, the first example was the display name spoofing. Within Spam Titan, we have particular tests that look for that. We'd also be looking at the, con the, the construction of the email, so the headers and the body of the email as well. So that should be blocked by Spam Titan. If a mail ever did slip in like that, Web Titan Cloud in place also. If you click on that, that link, Web Titan Cloud kicks in at the time of click and will block that request coming out, so it never gets to uh, call home. Very same with this. Spam Titan, as Eddie mentioned earlier, has the dual antivirus and sandboxing and so on built in. So we would identify this mail and we would block this mail also as a virus. Thanks, Derek. Um, it's clear that we really need to be alert for these scams and realize that they have an email and web component and that both of these components need to be secured. Um, Kevin, if I could come back to you as an MSP working on the coalface, um, these must be very challenging times. And I'm wondering what your world is like today and, and what keeps you awake at night in, in terms of these threats. It must be a massive challenge. Yeah, no, it, it is it is a massive challenge. I suppose the, the one thing, um, as I said probably before, is to be surround customers working from home, uh, getting too comfortable in kind of in, in their home environment and, and not thinking about threats uh, in, in, in a more serious fashion. Um, this is where complacency, complacency can come in around the, the like of um, the emails that are coming in. Clicking on links without think, thinking of what's behind them, um, responding to emails without thinking about where they came from, making the proper checks. Um, and I suppose, what, again, with what malware that can come down uh, with, from those emails. What we did find is a lot of people would have purchased uh, equipment in a hurry, uh, sent them home around uh, the time of the COVID outbreak. There wasn't a massive amount of thought went into how they were going to be set up. Some people were sent home with devices, they were set up with administrative credentials. And this kind of, this caused a problem whereby if something did come down, malware was easily pushed out to devices from that point of view. So the type of, that type of setup, uh, would be okay. the kind of thing that would keep you uh, that would keep me and our and the rest of the rest of our team sort of awake trying to trying to make sure that we that the remote user can work securely but again work like they're working from the office think about the same things and uh, I suppose not get back into bad habits okay so um interesting so complacency and, and a lack of planning I suppose around pushing this out to remote workers. Um, yeah, thanks for that, yeah. Kevin. Uh, sorry, just to follow on, um, how are you finding the Titan HQ solutions in this new environment? I'm wondering, is the fact that they're largely cloud solutions, is that significant? Yeah, no, it is, especially around the, the web Titan portion. Um, what we find, and even from our own point of view, from our own salespeople and myself and my colleagues are working remotely, um, with the DNS filtering, so it doesn't matter whether we're in the office, whether we're working from home, uh, we're protected from from the web point of view, um, and that 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 solves a, a large headache because, as I said before, a lot of people would have their uh, internet protection based on uh, within the office, and we're going, we're taking company devices out and we're being unprotected. Um, I suppose with with Web Titan, uh, that solves that problem. And again, Spam Titan being a, a cloud-based product, it's it's uh, it's it's very easy to 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 move to Spam Titan. It, it's it's uh, it's very accessible. Um, and what we're finding is what we're trying to push is for customers to buy um, both Spam Titan and Web Titan because it does give you that protection whereby you get your spam protection, 
um, but you also get protection from URLs that are included in emails. We've had a couple of examples where um, emails have arrived, um, and when they arrive, the URL that's within the email is, is perfectly legit, but after uh, after a small amount of time, that uh, URL can be pointed to a malicious website, and that's where Web Titan kicks in, along with Spam Titan. When the email is clicked, that that website or that PC is then protected, and um, access to that malicious website is blocked. So definitely, uh, definitely Web Titan is 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 a is a big plus in these times. Perfect. Thanks, Kevin. Um, it's great to hear you know from somebody who's who's working day to day to meet these challenges. Um, and Eddie, if I could finally come to you. Uh, on our call today, we have a lot of customers who are already using our Spam Titan email security solution. Um, are we seeing a lot of, of Spam Titan customers like Kevin uh, start to implement Web Titan also to protect their web users and data? Yeah, Jer, absolutely. And uh, we're seeing more and more of them. And I suppose Mark kind of touched at the top of the presentation about the changing environment we're in with COVID-19. And Derek, having run through how easy it is to implement Web Titan and why it makes uh, why it makes sense to do so. And then Kevin giving us, you know, really from the coalface out there with clients, what he's seeing in, in, in the real world today, you know, all of that brings us back to you know how important it is to have a, a DNS layer uh, as part of your security stack and, and I suppose one of the things we, we probably haven't mentioned is the elephant in the room for for many people is there there is a level of uncertainty out in the market today and many customers and many companies are looking at how they can reduce cost and one of the things I would say to, to everybody there is you just do not want to cut on security security is an area that you cannot uh, cannot cut. In fact, a security breach in today's environment could be more costly than ever for, for an organization. And as a vendor, Titan HQ, I think this is one of the, the key propositions we're bringing here. You know, we're bringing solid email security and solid web security, but at a price point that makes sense. So you don't have to compromise. You're going to get your best of breed technology and you're going to be able to keep your budget in check. But, but you know, I guess at the end of the day, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And that's why we'd encourage you all on this call to, if you haven't already looked at Web Titan, please reach out to us for a quick 10 minute demo. And we can show you in real life uh, exactly how easy and how effective uh, the Web Titan product is. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, some key messages there on, on the importance of securing both email and web with the, with the right solutions. Um, we have some time uh, for questions. I'm just going to go straight into these. Uh, Derek, if I could come to you. Andy from London asks, how does OTG work when connecting to public Wi-Fi, for example, in coffee shops? So the way OTG works um, when you're in the, the coffee shop, um, it will secure the DNS and send that to us for protection. So no matter where you connect to, in the coffee shop, in the airport or so on, the DNS will always be sent to us and that device is always protected. One thing I'd add there as well, if the Wi-Fi provider in that coffee shop says has a, has a splash page or a captive portal, OTG will allow that to occur. And once the device gets internet access, that's when OTG kicks in and secures the DNS layer. Great, thanks, Derek. Um, one last question as we're running out of time. Uh, Mark, if I could put this one to you. If I have 1,000 remote workers in 10 locations, how can I push Web Titan out to all users? Okay, um, well, I suppose, you know, as we've all alluded to, Web Titan has a lot of flexibility in, in the deployment mechanisms, but to quickly go over without going through the, this particular user's topology. Firstly, you could protect all your locations by just simply enabling a security layer uh, and, and pushing that traffic to us. Uh, secondly, maybe they have a headquarters and the other nine sites are remote branches, so they might want to integrate with, with an Active Directory, with an HQ, but the remote sites 
uh, or remote branches might be just an extra layer of security. Or the third deployment is that they can push out all the on-the-go agents to all thousand users and protect them on and off the network. Uh, so a lot of flexibility. And if that person wants to have a quick call after this to scope it out, we can go through that with them. So thanks, Mark. Um, sounds like there's a lot of flexibility there with the solutions and, and multiple options available to suit any scenario or setup. So I'd like to thank all of our panelists um, and thank you for attending today's webinar. As I mentioned, everyone will receive a follow-up email with a recording of the webinar. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to add them in the chat window and we'll get back to you with answers in the next 24 hours. Um, if you'd like to see Web Titan or any of our solutions in action, we'd be more than happy to set you up on a quick 10 minute demo. Uh, or if you have a question on a specific feature that we mentioned, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, you can reply to the email that we send you with the recording or please visit our website at www.titanhq.com. So that's it from us today. Um, on behalf of Titan HQ and our presenters, thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.